Hey guys, John Faulkner here with Firearms Depot, and I got Adam Peeney with me today. And uh, we want to talk about some range gear that we bring. People always talk about, uh, you know, their tools, their guns, their ammo, and everything. But these are some items that we bring it's to, all, to it's maximize. It's always guns and ammo. It's never the support system right. for those things. So. And this is all about maximizing the results that you're trying to achieve when you go to the range. Yep, and my kit looks totally different than John's kit. Just due to the focus of what we're into. Yeah. Um, and that's, okay, everybody's gonna have different priorities for what they need in support system. It's just making sure that you have those, you generally have a list of what those support items are and you maintain them. Yeah, and you know, I, I try to keep, this is kind of my, my box. This does not live inside my, what I'd call gun case. Uh, that has all my ammo, my tools, my mags. Yeah. This is all stuff that, that stuff. like rides in the back of our truck that yeah. never goes anywhere, but truck, and shooting, whether it's matches or practice, yep. it's always one of those two places, either in our hands or in our vehicles. Yeah, so um, you wanna talk about a couple items you got? And yeah, we'll out of the gate, my, the most important thing on my checklist of support items is anything that John has. Cause I generally just Pretty use much. like his targets, uh, his yeah. ad adhesive spray. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this is his yeah. magneto speed that I think I legally own it at this point. So pretty much on this table, it's all my stuff. Uh, uh, Adam, Adam just kind of borrows it. But let's start with the tripod here that you got set up. Yeah, so for, for my shooting, when I do you know long range competition stuff or hunting, being able to see things far away is important. And looking through a single tube scope doesn't necessarily give you the greatest amount of depth of feel, yep. uh, the ability to read wind conditions. So having my loophole Santans is one of the most important pieces of gear that I have. Uh, I keep them on a really right stuff uh, arc adapter so I can move them around, yep. whether I want to hold them in my hands or I want to throw them on tri my tripod. They are probably the most important piece of gear that I keep in my system at any time. And I make sure I clean the lenses, I check and make sure there's no issues because my tripod gets knocked over all the time. And I want to you know, keep them in as, as good a condition as I can. Uh, next thing down is the tripod itself um, because I use this for a variety of things. Obviously observation, I use it for weapon support if I'm gonna put a rifle on it. Uh, rear tripod support at a match. Uh, I put uh, chronographs on top of it if I'm trying to get catch speed. This is super super versatile piece of gear. That it's like I a third use. arm. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's expensive, but man, it gives you so much in terms of like reducing of stress when you're trying to like look at the groups that you've shot at 100, 200, and 300 meters with that stability to be able to say, oh, I see those little dots downrange. Yeah, I actually carry a, a pair of binos and these these are uh, Vortex Furies. They have a range finder built in them also. Um, not the same magnification power as like Adams, but like these are great for me um, if you're zeroing a red dot on mm -hmm. like a rifle at 50 yards, instead of, you know, shooting five shots and then getting up, going 50 yards to be like, oh, yep, yep, it's four clicks to the yeah, right. The constant you know? back, forth, Con back, forth. It's just a waste of time. It and tires you out. It also burns time in the yep. day, which I don't know about you, but we generally, when we go there, we're there to do a specific task yep. in this defined amount of time and maximizing that time is important. Yeah. Finding ways to shortcut is important. And so I'll just throw these on the ground next to me, you know, when I'm zeroing a rifle like that has like a red dot, or even if I if I have like a pistol that I'm zeroing at 25 Support yards. Support off a rear bag, yep. off the top of your scope. I mean, there's a ton, ton of ways to utilize uh, binos and spotting scopes yep. that aren't necessarily tripod mounted. Yeah, and I love the fact that these actually, they have a range finder in it with uh, also, so if your range isn't marked out as far as mm -hmm. the yardage back from the berm, you know you're exactly zeroing at 50 yards or 100 yards and, and get it to be as true as possible. And John will tell you, I am super picky about zero. So like, I want my gun to be zeroed within 100 to 104 meters. And I will absolutely range that out yeah. So that way I know I'm in that four meter gap distance of where I think is optimal and preferred. Because if I zero at 90 meters, I'm not gonna have the same ability to, to make good accurate adjustments at long range distance. Yep. Um, so yeah, having a good set of binos and a good laser range finder is its own necessity. I have the same set that I keep in a hunting rig. So that way if I'm out, I see a critter, I can observe them, I can laser them. That yep. way I know, I generally have a Bluetooth to my Kestrel, so it'll give me the data, dial, take a shot. Yeah, um, so, all right, what else you got on your side? Uh, next thing up is a chronograph. Uh, I don't use them very much, but when I do, they're, it's for an important reason. Generally, if I'm doing some kind of new ammunition workup, whether I've gotten a shipment in from a manufacturer 
or I've loaded the ammunition up. I want to know the speed that is coming out of the muzzle. I've used them all. I find the magneto speed to be the most accurate in terms of uh, velocity that I'm going to see downrange to what it's giving me at the muzzle. They're generally within about five to 10 feet of accuracy, which is super impressive. Yep. So having a good chronograph, especially if you're long range rifle shooter or hunter is really an important piece of gear, especially when you want to put stuff into a ballistic computer, whether it's an applied ballistics engine or geo ballistics. They both require a good accurate velocity just to start. And by looking at, if you're going to try to go off the numbers on your box, you're wrong. They're generally lower because they're lawyer safe. Yep. And they aren't accurate to what you're going to see. And if you're going to try to take a good ethical shot on a critter, it's irresponsible not to know the accurate data. Yeah, I agree. And I mean, next on my list, I always have an extra pair of hearing protection. Um, and, you know, these are actually my primary pair, but I usually have an extra pair always in my box or in my truck. Um, in case somebody were to show up, in case whoever you go to the range with just forgets theirs, uh, something like that, it doesn't, it doesn't slow down the day. Yep. You just grab them, throw them on, and, and move on. Generally, I don't keep an extra pair, but I will keep extra batteries yeah. for common headsets. So like yeah. my Comtax, I think they take doubles or triples. So I keep doubles and triples in my range box. So that way, yeah. if and I need them, they're there. As you have it right here. So this is one of the Theorem uh, cell vaults that Theorem makes. And it's just loaded with triple A's, uh, CR123s. Um, I have an extra battery in here for my binoculars. Uh, batteries for- 32s for yep. aim points and yep. RMRs that never die. Yep, so I always have this um, also that's kind of an, an accessory thing. So what else you got? Uh, next up is a toolkit. Um, having the ability to repair or adjust your weapon systems on the line without being reliant on another human is important. Yeah. Uh, I've had this fix it stick kit for probably three years. It's grown in terms yep. of what's in it. Like now I keep a, an MP5 adjustment tool because I own an MP5 now. Uh, I'll keep stare at levels. Um, I, I buy good expensive stuff because I want it to last. Yeah. I also want it to be able to take a beating. So like I've had backpacks fall off rooftops and I want to make sure that anything in here is safe, protected. But if it does take a bump, it's going to still give me yep. the performance that I want. So uh, a fix it stick kit or some kind of tool kit that has the necessities of, you know, of a, a basic Allen wrench kit, a uh, Phillips head, flat head, uh, a level is really handy to have, especially yep. if a rifle takes a dive and you want to figure out if your scope is canted. It's one of the easiest tools to throw on, but okay, I'm level or I'm not level. Yeah. Um, so tool kit, you don't have to have a big, you know, electrician's box, but having the basic necessities is important. Yep. Yeah, and I'll say what I have on top of my box here. Uh, these are just little sport cones. Um, I like these over regular, you know, the pointed cones. These, you these, yeah, you can step on them. They pop down. They pop back up. Uh, I usually have I don't know eight or ten. Um, I pretty much always have these in my truck. I just have a little velcro tether thing around them so they don't go yard selling on me super handy especially if you yeah. have shooters that are new to your range yeah. like if you're trying to get them on target you can say look for orange cones and those things stick out yeah you can put them in front of the cone you can make a line if you have multiple shooters with you and and you know you're not under an awning or a set line um, i like getting there i can use my binos or or uh, walk it off, but if I'm shooting just like pistol for the day, I'll usually put a cone down at like five or maybe seven yards and then 10 yards, 15, 20, and 25. And then Adam and I know for the rest of the day, when I'm at this cone, it's this yardage. If I'm at this cone, it's this yardage. And we can easily say like, you know, hey, we're gonna do uh, a bill drill from 10 yards. We know exactly which cone to go to. We're not like, is it, is it, eh, yeah. you know, you just walk again, up and you're maximizing done. that time. Yeah. Like, we'll sit there, we'll set out the ranges. But if in an hour you're like, what was 10 yards again? Right. If you don't have it marked off, you did, you're going to have so, double So super work. simple. I mean, I got these like on Amazon. You can pretty much get them anywhere. They're super cheap. Yeah. Next up for me is going to be a rear bag or support bag of some kind. I'm a big fan of Armageddon yep. Gears uh, Schmedium Game Changer. I have like six of these. I bought them. I've picked them up off prize tables. They're just super versatile. You can use them for everything from rear support, uh, if I'm shooting a handgun for accuracy, yeah, zeroing. You know, zeroing it, putting it on the table, uh, putting binos on them, if, you know, if I'm putting them on a table, they're just great. If I need to weight my bag down so the wind doesn't blow it away, 
yeah. you can't really beat it. So having a support bag, especially if you shoot a lot of rifle, is an important piece of gear to have. Yeah, and then uh, this box. So Adam knows what's in this box because he steals it out of my truck almost Sticky every time. Sticky fingers, all so the time. So this is what I call my target box. Um, all that literally is in here is things that go onto targets. Uh, it's the things so, I don't want to bring. Yeah, so usually in the back of my truck, I have IPSC targets, uh, cardboard targets, uh, steel targets of kind of all different sizes. And this is what really supports that. Um, so stapler, staples i keep them in uh when you get staples take them out of the crappy cardboard boxes they come in they usually get destroyed and you end up with staples everywhere i just put them in a magpul daca case um, but i don't actually use a staple gun that often because usually the wind starts and it just rips rips yeah. targets off and what john has gone to and to replace the stapler was huge it actually changed the way i practice and i i keep them as running yeah. clips and then uh, also adhesive spray. Yeah, so I just run these metal clips. Uh, got them from, I guess, Amazon probably. But it's nice to just put them onto uh, one by ones. They don't rip off like when the wind blows at you. Usually staples will rip out of the, the one by ones or two by ones, whatever your, your range if uses. If you're going to public ranges, they generally don't have great sticks uh, left. Yeah, sticks to put targets on. But yeah. this gives you the ability, even if you have like half a stick on one and then a full length on the other, you can hold your target down so it doesn't move. Yeah, so I always have a, I always have a ton of different clips. I mean, I have different sizes. I have more in my truck. Um, and then as far as paper targets go also, um, I picked this up. I mean, a lot of instructors use it. I picked it up from like Duffy and, and Don Edwards. It's, it's using Super, uh, Super 77 Loctite spray glue. And it's for all of my paper targets. So in here, I have B8 targets in the back. I got a dot torture. Uh, I have Green Line Tacticals 557 pistol drill printed out. And I just print them out. And then literally, I just usually spray an old uh, IPSC target mm -hmm. and, and stick one of these paper targets. And you can just keep stacking them on top of each other. Um, and yeah, spray it in like five seconds, slap it on there, and it's not coming off. It's fantastic. Like, uh, John showed me it, and I was like, I never need to worry about staplers again. And, and I haven't used one or bought one in probably two years. And because we live in Florida, it's always humid, the ground's wet, it's raining. So all of my targets are always in plastic bags. Um, and then I always have a big Sharpie, uh, a couple of big Sharpies um, for, for marking things. And then moving on to steel targets. I always have three colors of paint. So usually a white, uh, a red. Why do we use a red? What do we use a red for? Oh, I use it for waterline on steel targets, right. so it, it's it's a must-have. So having some kind of bright spray paint, white, orange, yep. neon green, something that you can see from several hundred meters away and know that you have a refined aiming point. Yeah, and then I usually have a can of black in here also, just in case we want to put a target at like 500 yards and then put a center dot in it and so that we know if windage is just a little bit off, if we're saying like, oh, it looks like three and it's constantly to the right, like, okay, we know it might be four because we're aiming at the same exact spot instead of kind of a little bit off. So I usually have a can of red, a can of black, and then always white for the steel targets. And then, uh, I mean, the last two things in here, uh, your friend and mine, snap caps. Um, not my friend when I'm trying to yeah. hide flinch. Snap, snap caps uh, to, to work on malfunctions and reloads and stuff like that. And then I usually have a shot timer in here. Yep. And because what I do is not generally like split time dependent, simple kitchen timer. They're like five bucks on Amazon. Uh, you set them up for, we run a minute 90, or minute, minute and a half stage, so 90 seconds. Set up for that, and that's that's all I needed to do is just yeah. countdown time. Yeah, uh, you can get significantly more expensive timers from Kestrel and all the other yep. manufacturers, but there's not really a reason. Having some way to measure yourself is important in terms of metrics and growth. Yeah, I agree. And you know, and like we said, guys, all these tools are just made to help maximize your time at the range. So you're not there, you're not trying to dig through stuff. And the reason why I kind of came up with this range box is, uh, as soon as we get to the range, I take it out. I made it because of Adam. Uh, we take it out and we just throw it on the ground. It's not like my paper targets are at the bottom under ammo and magazines and stuff like that. And Adam's trying to dig through and find paper targets. We just know that it's in the in the target box. And um, I come up, John. Where's your range box? It's in passenger seat of the truck. Perfect. That's all I need to know because so, everything's in there and organized. Yeah, and uh, and it's one of those things where I, I don't have any really. Um, you also got to be well, yeah. Not keeping expensive stuff inside of it yeah. is important because 
Dude, I forget things all the time. Um, and, I, and I will say, you'll see kind of a theme here. I try to make as much stuff that I take to the range that goes onto the ground orange, um, just so that if we throw it down on the ground, you pack up all of your valuable stuff first mm -hmm. and, and you see it. So my shot timer, if it falls off my belt or something, it's orange. My battery tray is orange. Um, so, you know, I try to do that just from experience of getting home from a range day or getting home from a class and you're like, yeah, that yeah. was on the ground. And I, I don't do that generally because most of my stuff ends up being double duty for hunting gear. It's generally more subdued, but that's my decision. And, and I know that I risk losing a bag because if I leave it on the ground, it's yeah. going to blend in with the brown ground yeah. all the time. So anything else you want to add? Uh, no, I mean, that, that's kind of everything that's important. I mean, this is stuff that if I'm, if I'm going to the range, it's with me because it's important to uh, having a successful day. Yeah. There's nothing worse than getting there and being like, I forgot X and now I just spent this time, money and effort yeah. and I'm not gonna get anything out of it. Yeah, we can make expensive noise, but that's not what we're there for. We're there to accomplish whatever that given task is. And this gear, helps make it easy, and it's a relatively cost-effective way to yeah. live your life. Yeah, I mean, there's really nothing in this box that, that is expensive at all. I mean, everything in here is pretty much less than a half a tank of gas, which is gonna take you to get, or Bino, to get to the range. Binos and ear protection, which are necessities for shooting guns anyway, are generally the most expensive things. Yeah. Like, other than that, uh, yeah, this bag is like $100, uh, toolkit maybe 100 bucks, uh, chronographs 300 bucks, it's not expensive, but it's just stuff that I know out of years of doing it, make things easier. Yeah, so I agree. And uh, we'd love to hear what you guys like to take to the range to maximize your time there as well. So leave comments below. And as always, make sure you like and subscribe to this video. And uh, we appreciate you guys taking your time to come along the ride with us. Holler. See ya.